For any young woman interested in a career in the feminist sisterhood, climbing that mountain can be a daunting and seemingly impossible task. But thankfully, a set of Ten Commandments has been passed down from upon high to help guide the flock to the top of feminist academics. Following the Ten Commandments of feminist research will guarantee a long and fruitful career as a feminist scholar. We begin with the Zeroth Commandment. This is not a true commandment, but more like a helpful tip, as many of the commandments make use of it. Thou shalt use vague and overly broad definitions and categories. Thy questions shall be vague and open to subjective interpretation, and thou shalt make use of leading questions to ensure the correct response. Commandment 1 The patriarchy is the one and only cause of all phenomena. It is not a theory, but the one true fact. Thou shalt have no explanations other than the patriarchy. The sole purpose of thy research is to prove the patriarchy. This is the most important commandment of all, and cannot be broken under any circumstance. All other commandments may be broken in order to fulfill the first commandment. Commandment 2 Thou shalt use anecdotal evidence if and only if it supports the patriarchy fact. A woman's experience is infallible, so long as she's a feminist. If she's not, thou shalt discredit her as having succumbed to the patriarchy and internalizing her own misogyny. Commandment 3 Thou shalt not use control groups as they risk weakening or invalidating thy claims. Thou shalt not check if a discovered effect in women is also found in men. Thou shalt assume men lead perfect glorious lives as kings in paradise. Anything less would run counter the patriarchy fact. Remember, control groups are the invention of male science designed to hold women down. Commandment 4 Thou shalt actively sample from subsets likely to support the patriarchy fact. Thou shalt choose the resolution that best agrees with the patriarchy fact. Example. The patriarchy fact claims women are being denied access to education. This is men's fault, of course. So let's look at some statistics by college students by major. Now, I don't know how accurate these are, but it doesn't matter because we're just using them for an exercise. If you're interested, the links to all sources are in the video description. Looking at this table, we find that the majority of students are women, which doesn't seem to support the claim. Wrong answer. The patriarchy fact is never wrong. Remember the first commandment. So instead, let's invent a category and call it Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, or STEM. What is the specific definition of STEM? And which majors are STEM majors? It's not exactly clear. Remember the zeroth commandment. Vague definitions are a great tool. So why STEM? because we suspect ahead of time that this is a corner of the population with more men. If we include anything that could be considered STEM, we get 49% women. Wrong again. So let's remove some of the majors that have more women, starting with family science. I don't know what that is, but it's probably not actual science. Then we'll remove psychology and social science. Are these STEM? I don't know. They certainly have scientific aspects, and many anthropologists are full-on scientists. We're also going to drop biology and medicine. That's right, we're removing biology and medicine from the science category. There's a lot of women there. You may think that's crazy, but I've seen many talks on this subject at my university in which biology is silently omitted from the STEM category. We're definitely keeping computer science, though, which is certainly less of a STEM field than biology, but it's got a lot of men. Now that we've thrown out the three largest STEM majors, which are all majority female by the way, we find that there are only 24% women. Correct. The patriarchy has been proved. Women are being kept out of education. But be careful with your resolution. For example, if looking at physics, which is mostly men, you don't want to break it up any further, 
because astronomy and biophysics have a lot of women, which would prevent you from generalizing that all of physics is part of the patriarchy. Commandment 5 Thou shalt omit all context. The patriarchy is thy one and only context. Thou shalt treat thy cherry-picked subsamples as representative of the entire population. Example, the history of voting rights. Feminists like to point out that women couldn't vote until about 100 years ago. While this is technically a factual statement, presented as such makes it sound like throughout the history of civilization, men alone voted until women finally got theirs in the 20th century. But if we add some context, we see that's just not the case. Remember that the third commandment forbids cross-checking with men's situation. Commandment 6 If needed, thou shalt modify thy original definitions in order to throw out wrong data and make thy results fit the patriarchy fact. We saw some of this with the STEM case, but let's take a look at a more clear example. The patriarchy fact predicts that women are being turned away from job opportunities, particularly by men. So in 2016, the Australian government decided to simultaneously expose and rectify this problem with nameless resumes. To their surprise and horror, they found that instead less women were hired and that it was women who were most likely to practice discrimination. No, 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 no. This cannot be. So they redefine what clearly showed discrimination towards men as evidence that affirmative action is working and recommended keeping names on resumes. Never mind that they inadvertently just demonstrated that affirmative action is indistinguishable from discrimination. Commandment 7 Once thou hast fabricated a correlation, thou shalt present it as evidence of causation. But careful, thou shalt not say so explicitly. Doing so could embolden or create unbelievers. Commandment 8 Thou shalt revert to specific definitions and categories by omitting all previous vagueness when concluding. Thy conclusions shall unambiguously support the patriarchy fact. Example, sexual harassment, sexual assault, and rape. The term sexual assault is more broad and vague than rape, which is very clear and unambiguous. But sexual harassment is more broad and vague still than sexual assault. So when conducting a study on the prevalence of rape, Define one large category encompassing rape, sexual assault, and sexual harassment. This category will include every type of behavior from staring, flirting, to groping, to rape. Since everything goes in one basket, the incidents will be grossly inflated since looking at people, flirting, and sexual banter are very common and usually normal behaviors and will therefore make up the vast majority of the incidents. Now you find that one in four women have had an experience that fits the all-encompassing category. As do men, but remember commandment 3, no control groups. You can now omit the vagueness of the category and conclude that 1 in 4 women have been raped. Fun fact, this commandment was revealed to the prophet Mary Koss in 1987. Commandment 9 Thou shalt use citations to appear credible. Thou shalt not cite studies that disagree with the patriarchy fact. Opinions that support the patriarchy fact are valid sources. Thy source need not corroborate thy claims or even exist, as very few are those who will check. Note that Commandment 9 is only possible if publishing in op-eds or feminist journals. Example. In a 2017 op-ed piece in Wired magazine, UC San Diego physics and astronomy professor Allison Coyle claims to know why men don't believe women. Notice, it's a given that men don't believe. The revelation here is as to why. In her article, Coyle cites one study having found a subtle anti-female bias in science faculty, but omits the numerous studies that have found the opposite effect, most notably the infamous large-scale summary of five different studies having found a two-to-one bias favoring women in academic hiring. She proceeds to justify her implicit claim that men don't believe by citing a paper she claims showed just that. When in fact, the paper she cites very unambiguously found that men generally do believe. Remember, very few readers will bother to verify what the paper actually said. I took the liberty of plotting the results of this paper, in which subjects were asked to rank whether they believed a study on a scale from 1 to 6. 1 being not at all, 6 completely, and 3.5 in the middle. As we can see, men generally believe the studies a bit less than women, but the two curves mostly overlap. 
The study then flipped the results of the bias in their mock studies to see if it changed people's opinions. Coyle is quick to point out that men were now slightly more likely to trust the study, but omits the fact that the opposite shift was even greater in women. That is, women's shift towards disbelief was even greater. Coyle then claims to know why men don't believe, even though they really do, but cites no studies, just pure conjecture and opinion on her part. She simply states that men don't believe because no one wants to admit they have it easier, a rationale that could equally be used to explain why women do believe. This is truly a masterpiece of fraud. I mean, feminist scholarship. Commandment 10. Thou shalt repeat feminist claims, figures, mantras, soundbites, and talking points whenever possible. Sufficiently repeated claims shall be believed regardless of validity. There is an implied, unofficial, and unwritten commandment. It's not a true commandment, as any feminist would know this goes without saying. Thou shalt use ad hominem and shaming tactics to bully and silence all unbelievers. Thou shalt use smear tactics and campaigns to ostracize and discredit all unbelievers. Follow and master these Ten Commandments, and thou shalt be embraced by the sisterhood as a true feminist scholar. Now that thou art an expert in feminist research, thou shalt never forget the old adage, there are lies, damned lies, statistics, and feminist statistics. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thank you.